In this video, I'm going to show you how to effectively run auto ads for your books and also how to manage them. So when it comes to the different types of ads, auto ads, manual keyword and manual product campaigns, auto ads is the easiest way to run ads on your books. And actually during my first three to four years of KDP, I only ran auto ads for my books with the exception of one or two occasions when I gave manual ads a try. But for the most part, I ran auto ads for my books and I saw success. So you too can see success if number one, you run them correctly and number two, you also manage them properly. So the thing is ads, if you run and manage them correctly, they can help with the initial boost of your books. So you can get the initial sales coming in which can cause your book to rank high up in Amazon searches. And as a result, you can start making organic sales. So usually that's the purpose of running ads and ads will be effective. Auto ads will be effective if the following three conditions are met. So here are the conditions for having an effective auto ad campaign. So the first condition is that your book or the niche that you're publishing in has to have demand. So have a look at this dot to dot niche for kids. So you can see that by looking at the BSR, the niche definitely has demand. So most of these books, they're under 40 or 50,000 BSR, as you can see here. And from this, you can definitely conclude that this niche has demand. So that's the first condition for an effective auto ad for the niche to have demand. The second condition is that the niche doesn't have too much competition. So of course you want to publish in a niche that has low competition and that doesn't require too much of an ad spend. Because if you publish in a niche that has too much competition, then you'll have to bid a high amount when it comes to running your auto ads campaign and you'll also have to have a higher budget in place. You'll have to spend at least five to seven or ten dollars a day to see sales. So you don't want to do that and you want to publish in a niche that has medium to low competition or low to medium competition and this particular niche dot to dot for kids I would consider this to be of high competition and I wouldn't advise anyone to publish in such a niche unless they have a high budget and a high amount that they can spend on ads. So what you want to do is do your research and whether or not you publish in this niche, you want to do your research and get into a sub niche or category that has lower competition. So that's the second condition. The third condition is that you create a great book. So you want to create a book that has an amazing looking cover. That's regardless of the niche that you're getting into. You want to create a book that has a good cover and one that also stands out. For instance, when I look at this particular book, so this is actually a newly published book and I can tell just by looking at the fact that it has no reviews. And when I look at this cover, it's not actually bad. I think that whoever's designed it, they've done a pretty good job of creating something that looks good. So from the cover, you can see that the title stands out. The illustration that they've used is also large. And just by looking at the cover, you can tell that it's a dot to dot book. So this is a good example of someone who's created a good looking cover. And I can only imagine that the interior will also be good. But anyway, these are the three conditions that you should meet before you even consider starting an auto ads campaign. So let's say you've met these conditions. So what you want to do is head over to the dashboard to start a campaign. And of course, we're starting an auto ads campaign. And what I'm going to do is click on continue over here. And what you want to do is click on standard ad. We're not interested in custom ad campaigns and the only type of campaigns that you're really going to be running or the ad format will be 
uh, standard ad. So over here you want to search for your book and I'm just going to use one of my books as an example. So instead of searching for it, I'm just going to add one of these. And if you've published multiple books in a niche, then you can of course add multiple books and I often do that myself. So let's say you did get into the dot to dot niche for kids and you've created two different books. So two different covers, two different interiors. Then what you can do is you can add multiple books to a campaign. So there's nothing wrong with that. And I've also done this in the past and still continue to do so. So that's entirely up to you. But for this example, I'm just going to have one book added. So the next thing you want to do is ensure that you've got auto targeting or automatic targeting selected. And then for your bid amount, and this is important because this step here, I'm sure most people know this, but what I like to do with auto ad campaigns nowadays or with manual ad campaigns that I run is to start at a low bid amount. So I usually like to start off at around 21 cents or you know, something like 20 or 19 or even something as low as 17 cents. I would recommend that you start low to avoid wasting money, to avoid your campaigns from suddenly spending too much money. And what you can do is increase your bid amount over time. So have a look at the competition of your niche. If you find that it's a little bit more competitive, then start off at a higher amount such as 21 cents. If it's less competitive, then something such as 17 cents. So 16 or 17 cents will work. And as you can see here that I'm throwing out these numbers as there's no rule to say what amount you need to start at. You can start at 10 cents. You can even start at 15 or 17 or 21. It doesn't really matter. And it's entirely up to you and you can experiment with this. So let's say you start off at 17 cents. Leave this negative targeting. You don't need it now, but you will need it later on. The next thing you want to do is for your strategy, you want to have it selected as dynamic bids up and down. Now, many people, they'll prefer to start at dynamic bids down only, but I like to have my campaign set at dynamic bids up and down solely for the reason that I've seen better results using this setting. So dynamic bids up and down will mean that you give Amazon the permission to spend up to 100% more of your chosen bid amount. So as my chosen bid amount is 17 cents, I give Amazon the permission to spend up to 34 cents on a single click if they see it fit and if they think that it can bring in a sale. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to spend 34 cents on every click. On some clicks, I might spend the exact amount of 17 cents. On other clicks, I might spend or Amazon might spend 25 cents on others, 30 cents, etc. But they'll never spend more than 34 cents on a single click. So you want to have this strategy selected, dynamic bids up and down. And then over here, what you want to do is name your campaign. So name it something appropriate. And then for your daily budget, you can have it at $1, you can have it at $3, you can even have it at $10 if you want to. That's entirely up to you and it depends on your budget and how much you're willing to spend on your book. And one thing to know is that just because you have $10 selected doesn't mean that you're going to spend exactly $10 daily. More often than not, when I start these campaigns, I spend no more than 2 to $3 a day. So that's entirely up to you. And if you're a beginner and if you have a low budget, then you'll probably want to start off at around 2 to $3 or even $1 if you want to. And once you've launched your campaign, what you want to do is monitor the campaign. And that's the second step. You don't want to just leave the ad as it is. You want to monitor it. And what I'm going to preach in this video is to monitor the campaigns every seven days. So every week, monitor the campaign. 
and have a day fixed for checking up and monitoring your auto ads campaign of course you can check it on a daily basis and you can monitor it daily but the benefit of checking every seven days or let's say every monday or tuesday is that you'll have more of a data to work with if you check up on and adjust your ad daily you'll have less data to work with and the decisions that you'll make will be based on short-term results which isn't really ideal and you want to really look at and work off long-term data so what you want to do is monitor the metrics so monitor the spend as you can see here that with this particular campaign I spent just under seven dollars in the last seven days monitor the sales monitor the a cost impressions etc and ideally you want to be aiming for around three to four thousand or more impressions weekly if you find that you're getting less impressions let's say a thousand or less and you're not really spending much then of course you want to raise your bid amount so let's say you start off at 17 cents then you want to start raising it to around let's say 21 cents it all depends on how much impressions you're getting if you're only getting let's say 500 impressions a week then of course you'll want to raise it by a higher amount let's say from 17 cents to 21 cents but if you want to just boost your impressions slightly then you'll want to raise it by one or two cents so that's the first thing that you want to do you want to monitor the metrics the next thing you want to do is head over to search terms and then look for books that are getting clicks but not generating any sales so have a look at all the search terms and what you can do is filter it by clicks so if you do this then you'll have the books or search terms that are getting the most clicks displayed at the top so if you find that there's certain products or keywords that are generating clicks but no sales so let's say around 12 to 15 or 20 clicks but they're not generating any sales then what you'll want to do is make a list of these keywords books and keywords as I have done over here so let's say these are products and these are keywords so make a list of them and once you've done that you'll want to copy the products and add them to the negative list so head over to negative targeting and then negative products and you'll want to copy and paste the list over here and exclude them so I've added a keyword here but let me just copy this so you'll want to add all of these over here and click on exclude so you'll no longer be shown for these particular products and you'll stop wasting money on them the next thing you'll want to do is do the same thing with negative keywords so have a look at all of the keywords that are generating clicks but no sales not all of them of course you don't want to just get books that have only generated one or two clicks but no sales and add these to the negative list as mentioned it's only the books and keywords that are generating many clicks but aren't getting sales so grab the keywords as well that are getting clicks but no sales copy them and also add them to the negative list so this time head over to the negative keywords tab click on add negative keywords and just add them over here and for the most part you'll add them as negative exact and not negative phrase so that's the next step and then what you'll do after that is you'll head back over to search terms and you look for books or keywords that are irrelevant to your book so let's say you've published a dot to dot book and you're getting shown for a gratitude journal for kids so let's say this book over here this book is a gratitude journal and you're getting clicks for it now what you'll want to do is 
add this book or the books that are irrelevant to the negative targeting as well not just books but also keywords so once again using the example of a dot to dot book let's say you've created a dot to dot book for kids ages 3 to 5 but it's getting displayed for kids ages 8 to 12 so what you want to do is add that particular keyword to the negative targeting so once again if there's a list of a few books that you want to add you want to add them to a word document or notepad or something similar copy them and then add them to the negative targeting list so add the keywords in the keywords tab so just over here and add the products in the products tab so the negative products tab and what this will do is over time it will make your campaign more focused as it's not targeting all these irrelevant products and keywords and products and keywords that you get clicks from but people don't buy your book so that's what you should do when you're monitoring your campaign and the next thing is results so hopefully you're getting impressions clicks and also sales monitor your a cost because this is very important there's no use in getting clicks and sales if your a cost is 150 percent or 200 percent this means that you're wasting a lot of money on the campaign so instead what you should aim for is a a cost which is healthy and if you have a look at my a cost over here you can see that it's just over 12 percent you can't always achieve an amazing a cost like this but ideally you want to be sort of break even or less so let's say from the royalties that you earn from your book the break even percentage is 23 percent so ideally you want to remain under that percentage so if i go to last 30 days over here you can see that my a cost is once again pretty low and it's under the break even amount for the book which is around 24 or 25% for these particular books over here. So you'll want to monitor this and you'll also want to monitor your clicks to sales rate. So over here you can see that for this particular campaign my clicks to sales rate is quite healthy. So in the last 30 days from 94 clicks I've managed to achieve 11 orders and if I just do that calculation so 94 divided by 11 you can see that I've managed to achieve a clicks to sales rate of 8.5 so from every 8 to 9 clicks that I'm getting I'm generating a sale which is a healthy rate so you want to ensure that your book also has a healthy clicks to sales rate and if what you're getting is a sale every 20 or 30 clicks then you'll want to really consider whether or not you should continue to spend money on the book that you're running ads on something around 1 in 10 to 12 clicks is fine but anything over that then you'll really have to consider how good your book is or perhaps it can even be the price perhaps you're charging too much for your book and you might want to lower the price to see if your clicks to sales rate improves and that's how you run auto ads for your books for maximum results if you enjoyed this video then do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and if you want to learn about how to create effective titles and subtitles for your books then check out the videos that's on your screen now and thank you for watching